Hey guys, welcome to the channel, and today we're going to be taking a look at my version of the field rifle. Hey guys, how's it going? And today we're taking a look at my field rifle. If you guys have watched the Brass Facts field rifle video, or most recently the Risky Crisky field rifle video, that's what inspired this. And I've had this rifle for a while now, but I thought I'd share it. So for those who don't know, a field rifle is kind of a can do all things type of rifle while trying to keep things lightweight and streamlined in case you had to pack it around or something like that. For me, all it is is just a no frills, lightweight, general purpose rifle. So for me, this rifle has to be good at shooting varmints like coyotes, groundhogs, things like that. It needs to be a good truck gun, home defense gun, things like that, a little bit of everything. And I wanted to keep it lightweight and simple and if you've seen the stuff on my channel, you know I like the retro stuff, so of course, it has to be retro. So this isn't a full review on this rifle. We're just gonna talk about the specs and go over it. A full review is coming, but let's go ahead and get into it. So starting at the front, I have a Yankee Hill Turbo K 5.56 suppressor with their muzzle device, which that is pinned and welded to a 14 and a half inch LBE government profile barrel. Originally, I wanted to find a pencil barrel for this, but they are about impossible to find in a carbine length gas system. So I had to settle. Moving back, we've got a Surefire G2X light, which these are freaking wonderful, especially for the money. And it's just being held on with a cheap 30 millimeter or one inch uh, scope ring. And it's attached to a KZ USA Picatinny bayonet adapter. The front sight is from an M16A2. Moving back, we have a CAR-15 style handguard, which is the slimmer one. Moving further back, the upper is a military surplus Colt M16A2 upper. We've got a Fail Zero black nickel boron coated bolt carrier group and bolt. I've got it on a JMAC lower receiver. And then the charging handle is a Silencer Shop Gas Buster. And spoiler, I'm not a huge fan of it, as you can see, we're already missing the latches on the side. Those fell off within a couple weeks of using it. But it does keep the gas out of your face when you're shooting suppressed. So it does do that well. I've got a Rock River Arms National Match two-stage trigger, which are wonderful. A Hogue pistol grip. And then a CAR-15 style stock with recoil pad. And the buffer assembly all came from Tony's Customs, along with the rest of the furniture on this gun. I'm using a... Citizen Gear Company, cast iron sling, and woodland camo. And that really about sums it up, other than the optic. This is the primary arm 3X green illuminated optic with the kill flash on it. And I freaking love this thing, it is wonderful. 3X for where I'm at, or three times magnification, is perfect because I can see far enough to make a long shot at a coyote or a groundhog, yet I can use it up close if I need to. The green illumination is also really nice. It is night vision compatible. However, it's not ideal, especially with the magnification. It's basically a dot at that point, but you can passively aim, so it's better than nothing if that's what you're gonna do. But yeah, that's it. Pretty simple, lightweight, very slim, no frills rifle that still does what I need to do. I can identify targets at night. I can get out to distance. I've got the built-in rangefinder. I have killed groundhogs with this, uh, shot coyotes, things like that, and it works really well for that. So, if you guys have any questions, drop them down in the comments. And as always, and most importantly, stay free.